If you just got a shiny new macOS computer, you might be wondering how you can keep it secure. Today, we'll take a look at some tools that will protect you against ransomware and electronic eavesdropping on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. When setting up a new macOS computer, there's a couple of different things we can do to help keep it more secure. Now, one of those things is to be on the lookout for suspicious behavior, and a couple of those things would be someone surreptitiously accessing our microphone or a camera, or somebody attempting to encrypt our entire hard drive in the event of us getting some ransomware. Now, the way we can protect against this is by some excellent tools by former NSA researcher Patrick Wardle. His website, Objective-C, has a number of free tools that will allow us to do two different things. One will be to protect against ransomware by looking out for anything that's encrypting large sections of our hard drive. And the second will be a program called Oversight, which will constantly monitor for somebody attempting to access our microphone or our camera. Now, in order to use these, you'll need to have a macOS computer, and you'll need to be able to go to the website to download the tools. Once you have this, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description if you have any problems or if you need to do any troubleshooting. Once you've done that, then we're ready to go. I would recommend going to objective-c.com and for one, taking a look at the sheer amount of malware that's been developed for macOS computers. Now, I definitely don't recommend downloading any of these. However, it gives you an idea for how many things are out there that could cause harm to your computer. But there are a couple of characteristics that all of these have in common that we're going to take advantage of in order to detect them before they can do much damage. Now, if we go to products, you can see that there's actually a lot of different things that are available here. But for what we're covering today, the most practical ones are going to be oversight here and uh, ransomware. So let's start with ransomware. This is the kind of uh, alert that you'll be looking to generate anytime something starts acting suspiciously on your computer. Although the ability for it to generate the occasional false positive is not really that annoying because it doesn't come up that often. Now in general, what you'll be looking for is if you install this, it'll run in the background and anytime something is doing something that involves uh, encrypting a whole bunch of files, it will generate alert, an alert and tell you what is encrypting, uh, which process is encrypting something, what it's encrypting, and give you the ability to stop it if it's, for example, encrypting your entire hard drive and it's some sketchy torrent you just downloaded that you thought was a movie, but instead is ransomware. Now, this kind of scenario might not seem that common, but if you're going to be interacting with files that have the potential to run amok, this kind of heuristic warning, which is actually just looking for a bad behavior rather than a specific type of malware, is a good way to make sure that your files uh, don't get encrypted by something that you download by accident. So to download it, we can click on download here. And I will note that although I did mention there are some false positives, we had a relatively difficult time getting it to generate a false positive while we were shooting the show. We tried downloading a couple different things, and while we were able to get a signature on a, uh, I believe it was Tor browser to pop up once, we weren't able to do it consistently. Now, I support Patrick on Patreon, and if you like these tools and you want to see them continually updated, I recommend checking out his Patreon here. But because I have already uh, done that, I'm going to go ahead and just download the tool. So, it's going twice. Oops. All right, so there we go. We have it. I can double click on it click on open, and then it'll need the password so it can run in the background. And basically what this program is doing, um, amongst a, a number of other things, is checking the file input output to see if there's anything with a high amount of entropy that is being encrypted. And it is also able to differentiate between something that's just being compressed, which is pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and click on install. The install process is very, very simple. And there we go, we now have it running in the background. So what are we looking for? Well, if we get an alert that looks like this, here we go, allow or terminate, we can see that if there's something suspicious, we can click on terminate, and that should allow us to shut it down. Now, I did actually try to test this out. I wrote a little Python program here, and we can see that this is basically just a file that's supposed to uh, encrypt the same hundred files, or in this case, the same 10 files 10 times, or, oh wow, a thousand times. So when we run this, it starts doing all sorts of encryption. We'll go ahead and run it. And aside from making my computer slow and hot, 
even though it's going through and encrypting all these files and creating all this encrypted noise, uh, it doesn't pick up on it. Uh, I'm not totally sure why, but we weren't really able to get anything in particular to trip the false negative on this one, and I'm not willing to download malware on my computer to test it out. However, I can confirm that while Adobe or some other programs are updating, I have been able to get this prompt that allows me to indicate, yes, it's Adobe, I trust this. So basically, if you get this prompt, you should be either installing a program or a legitimate update should be taking place. If not, then you should be suspicious and maybe terminate it if it's something that's uh, writing to or encrypting a file or a partition that you think is valuable or you know, is some data you might not want to lose. All right, so the next tool we're going to take a look at is oversight. So one of the flaws in trying to stay uh, secure from snooping is that there's no LED on the actual microphone. This can be a problem because if somebody were able to tap into it, they could listen to you and you would have no way of knowing that it was turned on. So aside from putting some tape on our uh, laptop's camera, we can take the next step and effectively do the same thing with the microphone as well. Now, of course, this also will allow us to keep an eye on the webcam, but because this is enabled by firmware, um, it's generally pretty difficult to get the camera to turn on without the LED turning on too. So if you're a skilled attacker, most of the time they're not going to waste their time trying to turn on the camera when they can just listen in on you without alerting you at all. So clicking on oversight, we can just use the oversight installer and enter our password. and click on install. There we go. So we can access the configuration in the status bar. And generally you can see this little umbrella. We can see active devices, inactive devices. Uh, we can see preferences and you can see currently there's a active device that's monitoring the uh, microphone because we're doing a recording. And if I was to do something like, let's say photo booth. And as soon as it opens, we should see an alert pop up. Yep, there we go. That a video device has become active. Now here we can either click on allow or block. And in this case, I'm going to click on allow and generally it will ask whether or not I want to do this persistently, uh, always, or just once. In this case, I will put just once. So just like that, you can see that because this activated the camera, I got a notification. And I will note that if you have notifications disabled, then this won't work. So you need to make sure that you have notifications on because otherwise these notifications don't go anywhere. All right, so now that we've proved this, you can see that aside from these tools, there's a number of other great products offered on Objective-C. We're not gonna cover them today because they're a little bit more advanced and they might be for people with kind of more security concerns that might be a little more paranoid or who actively think that there's malware installed on their computer. For people who are just concerned about making sure that their computer is generally protected, these are a couple great tools you can put on your macOS computer as soon as you get it that will keep it safe and secure and also prevent you from being unintentionally snooped on by somebody who managed to get some uh, software in your computer. While ransomware and oversight can help protect your macOS computer, they aren't a silver bullet and they shouldn't be considered completely effective against any attacker because there's always a way to get around tools like this if you know that someone's using them. That being said, it's good to be discreet about your security policies so you're not telling everyone your exact password length or the fact you're using a tool like this because if somebody knows about it and they're going after you specifically, it is fairly easy to get around things like this. Now, if you have any problems setting up these tools, you can check out Patrick Wardle's website, or you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description for any troubleshooting you might need. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions or ideas about future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.